सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर्यं करवावहै तेजस्विनावदि तमस्तुमा विद्विशावहै ओम शांत शांत शांति ही ओम पूर्णमतः पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्छते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमीवा वशिष्यते ओम शांत शांत शांति ही श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा नाम आलयं करुणालयं नमामि भगवत् पादम् शंकरम् लोक शंकरम् शंकराचार्यम् केशवम् बादरायनम् सूत्र भाष्य कृतौ वंदे भगवन्तौ पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मेति मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमा वद्व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्तये नमः सो बुद्धो शरणमन विच्छे सो फॉर वी डिस्कस्ड व्हाट काइंड ऑफ attitude we should have while performing action when we are performing action what should be the bent of mind and what uh, shelter we should take while we are performing action we discussed at length that we should always keep in mind the nature of the self and then perform the action. In that case, we will be the giver. And Bhagavan has also advocated the Yajna Bhavana, the spirit of offering, which we have to keep in mind while performing action. When the spirit of offering, Yajna Bhavana, Yajna Vai Vishnu, this Bhavana its, itself is Vishnu. So when we keep this bhavana, then our action will become an offering. And this will, we cannot imagine where this will take us. It will just take us higher and higher and higher in the sense that it will purify us, make us noble, nobler and nobler and bring us very close to the self. Because every time we do this, we are with Ishvara. We are with Ishvara. Because as we discussed yesterday, it is this Yajna Bhavana upon which, or keeping this in mind, this is the principle upon which the creation is designed. The creation is designed by Ishvara keeping in mind this Yajna Bhavana spirit of offering, contributing, sharing, giving. And when we have this bhavana, when we have this attitude, we are with Ishvara. We are joining hands with him. Just as Hanumanji says, you know, Ram Kaja Karibeko Athura. He is always eager to carry forth the things of Rama, the orders of Rama. Similarly here, when I perform my actions in the spirit of offering, then I am with Ishvara. And so now my life is not antagonistic to the order. Otherwise, when I perform an action for myself, it goes against the order. The order, the way in which Ishvara has made the creation. He has made it such a way that everybody has to give, everybody has to contribute. And when I am not in line with this spirit, then obviously 
I'm going against the design of Ishvara. And remember, that will create conflict in me. That will never be beneficial to me. It may give me, as we have discussed, it may give me some temporary result. It may bring that, but I'll not be better here. I'll not be wiser here. So we have to perform the actions in the spirit of offering. This we have discussed so far. Now we have to see the other aspect of karma. See, when we perform an action, action has, as it were, two facets, two aspects. One is while performing, one is the action that you do, and whenever you do something, the result comes. Along with the performance of an action, the result is contained, the result will follow. That is also the order, that when you do an action, the result is also bound to come. It is the effect. Action is the cause, and the result will be the effect. We have already seen what should be the attitude while performing action. When we perform an action, which, where should we take the shelter that we have seen? Where should we take the shelter that may this action be an offering at the altar of Ishwara? Ishwara means whoever is before me. May this action go to him. May this action help them, please them, bring them some happiness. May it serve their purpose, not my purpose, not my personal purpose. This we have discussed at length. Now we shall look into the result aspect. What should be my attitude? And where should I take shelter when the result comes? Now when the result comes, again, when it comes, it may either be favorable, it may not be favorable in the sense that it may uh, it may go against what I expected. So, again, what should be my attitude towards the result? If we are not careful here again, just as while performing the action, if we were not careful, and if we did not deliberately maintain the attitude of offering, the action would have bound us. Because, it is the nature of the action to bind. Karmana badhyate jantuhu. By an action, jantu means jiva. Shruti, you know, calls jiva as jantu only. Jantu means an insect. Even in Vivek Chudamani, Pashikara says, jantu nam narajanma durlabham. <laughs> For the jantu means the jivas, narajanma. Being born as human being is rare. So there also I'm just referring and just pointing your attention to how the human being is referred to by the Shruti and Acharya as Jantu. So, karmana badhyate jantu, karma binds. Whenever you perform an action, it is written in your account and then it will bring the result and then if you like the result, that will also be bondage. If you do not like it, it will also be bondage. In as much as if I like it, I will want to do it again. If I do not like it, I will, I will avoid that and do something else. So the result doesn't, st you know, when you perform and it doesn't stop there, it either leads you to perform the similar action or some other action. In both ways, it binds. So, but we saw the antidote. When will the karma not bind? Tell me. The nature of which karma, understand this, is to bind. The nature of the karma is to bind. 
but we reversed it. How did we reverse? How did we reverse? By the spirit of offering. I didn't do it for myself. It goes to Ishwara. I am not, the phala will not come to me. In as much as, you know, whatever be the phala may be good or bad, but it will go to Ishwara, to the totality. In as much as the result which comes, I don't take the ownership because I kept a result in mind, but it was not for me. That doesn't mean that when the salary, you may, you, may you may ask me a question, it, it, it may occur to you that Swaminiji, does it mean that I don't take the pay, paycheck at the end of the month? No, please do take and ask for more. <laughs> but now, because I need it to support my family, society, we must take it. But it will not be used. I will not, when the result comes, I won't think that it has added to me. I have become better and bigger with this action. That won't be the attitude. The attitude is I got the opportunity to do something for the creation, to do something for the society, and for which I did work also. And what I got, the salary, I will use it also. That doesn't mean I use, don't use it completely for myself. For myself also, for my clothes, food, shelter, little bit. And I may use it, nothing wrong. But it is more for the family, more for those who need it, more for the society, because I have so far taken from them. I have, uh, they have sustained me, my parents, my society, my teachers, doctors, what not. We, we discussed all this at length. So I owe it to them. I give, the, I give their part to them. I don't grab the entire thing. This we saw. Now, when, the, when I was doing, but when this spirit was there, this action will not bind me. In as much as it will not create raga or dvesha. And I will forge ahead. I will move on. Otherwise, the one action will lead to another third one propelled by my likes and dislikes. Propelled by my likes and dislikes. So we have to keep in mind what is the propelling force behind action. Why am I doing it? Always ask yourself before doing anything. What is the force? What is compelling me? Check there. And there, take the refuge of what we have learned so far. This we saw. So, the, spirit, the yakinya bhavana is the antidote to bondage. That which would have bound me, in fact, it releases me. Ishwar arpitam, Raman Maharshi ji says, Ishwar arpitam nechaya krutam. When it is offered to Ishwara, not to the ego, it becomes muk, chitta shodakam mukti sadakam. What does it say? Chitta shodakam. It purifies me and becomes mukti sadakam. It becomes a means for liberation. This is how we change the nature of karma. The nature of karma, which was to bind, I released it from it. How? From outside, you cannot make out whether it is releasing me or binding me. But because of the attitude here, because of the noble attitude here, the same karma will release me. Similarly, now when the result comes, when I've performed an action, the result comes. Now the result may be to my estimate. What I expected, it may be exactly the same. Sometimes it may be less than that. Sometimes the result may be less than what I expected. I expected to get 75% and I got how much? 
45. 45. I expected to make this much profit from this deal, and what did I get? I lost my money. Much less. And sometimes it can be more also, more than what I expected. And sometimes, sometimes exactly opposite. <laughs> exactly opposite. Neither, ex neither exact, neither more, neither less, but what? Opposite. Opposite means something which I didn't expect at all, never imagined. Swamiji gives the example that I was going to the office, neither did I get the bus nor ride. And when I was crossing the road, then when I woke up, when I opened my eyes, I was in the hospital. Did I expect this, that I'll be in hospital? Somebody will come and push me, and I'll become unconscious, and I'll wake up in the hospital. And I'll ask, where am I? Who brought me here? Totally opposite. So, to handle the result, to handle the result is not easy. It is easy to say that I'm fine and full and perfect. Result doesn't matter. It doesn't happen that easily. Result, when the phala, when it comes, we must have the knowledge of, knowledge of the source who decides the result. Understand this very well. Lord Krishna says categorically, in unambiguous words, he says, karmani evate adhikaraha, ma paleshu kadachana. O Arjuna, your right, your freedom is in performing action. Karmani evate adhikara. You have your freedom in performing an action, whether to perform or not to perform, and perform it this way, that way, you decide. You have the free will, you decide. But your freedom stops there. Your freedom stops there. Result is decided by me. Lord Krishna is very clear. He says, Ma paleshu kadachana. That doesn't mean the result will not come. Result will definitely come because moment you perform, the result will come. That is the law. That is the law. That is the order. But what the result will be, that I cannot decide. Even though I may, you know, I may make my uh, assumptions and estimate and all that, but I cannot decide. This freedom is not given to us at all. It is He, the ruler, the creator, Bhagawan. People say, I don't believe in Bhagawan. You may better believe. Because He decides. He decides the result. And you may ask me that I perform the action, Swaminiji, and what business does he have to decide? I must decide. No, he has not given this freedom because he is the ruler. And he is what he knows in and out everything. He is Sarvagnyaha. Sarvagnya means omniscient. Omniscient. I may not even know the spelling of omniscient. <laughs> and he is what? Omnipotent. Omniscient and omnipotent. Omniscient means sarvagnya. Sarvam janati iti sarvagnya. One who knows everything. Plus, he is sarva shaktiman. We are not Sarva Shaktiman. Our Shakti, our powers are very limited. After some time, we can't sit down, cannot get up. Our Shakti is very limited, whereas He is all powerful, all powerful in the literal sense of the word. He is Sarvagnaha and Sarva Shaktiman. He has designed this creation and made the laws. Laws of cause and effect. When you do a thing in this manner, this will be the result. 
when I bring my hands together with this force, this noise, it will create, it will produce this noise. If I bring it little, with less momentum, that much, these laws, understand, these laws are made by Ishvara. In fact, the laws themselves are Ishvara. Not that he has made the laws and sitting somewhere else. Our Bhagavan is what? The creator as well as creation. The material as well as the maker. Everything is nothing but he. The laws themselves are Ishvara. And there is nothing misfit, no lacuna, no mistake in his laws. There is absolutely no manufacturing defect, nothing wrong in the way he gives the result. When the result comes, I may not like it. I may find that more often than not, we have complaints, you know, what? He has been unfair. Ishvara has been unfair to me. I deserved more. I deserved better, particularly than him. <laughs> but I deserved more than what my friend has got. I was, I'm more intelligent, more smart, more educated, and I didn't get the job. And he got it. And he's getting promotion too. This I cannot stand. Which means we compare why he got more, why I got less. Even among siblings, even among um, friends, even spouses, everywhere this is there. We compare and we feel that I'm not given, I did not get what I deserved. And these things remain with us. We can't settle the account. They are big sore points in the mind. With that, I cannot be happy. I cannot, my mind will not enjoy the peace and calm. He has been unfair. Why did he do this to me? Why did he do, do this to my mother, father, this, that, I cannot accept. But when we do this, and when we suffer, we suffer. We complain means we suffer. That time, we are ignorant of certain facts. What? That the result is in keeping with the action. But Swaminiji, when I performed the action, my intentions were very clear. I didn't do anything wrong. What did my mother do to deserve this? Tell me, what did she do to deserve this kind of result, this kind of destiny? I don't, I don't accept this. Yes, but understand, we just don't know why the result is like this but he knows it. And it may be hard to accept. It may be very hard to swallow that this is proper. That the, the result which has come is proper. I'm not in a mood to accept this. When people lose their children, husband, partners, they encounter losses in life, what not, you know, people have lots of dukkham in life. At that time to say this, that what he has done is fine. What, he, what, he, what you have come across, there is nothing wrong. To say this would be very, very hard and very cruel too. You should not say it at that time. That time console them. Be nice to them have soothing words for them. But when we are in the right state of mind, which we have now, that time we should know this. That time we have to learn this, that what he has dispensed is correct. Why? Simply because the result that I'm coming across 
is the result of my actions. Maybe not of this particular action. Understand, I performed an action. Understand this very well. Because we all have these questions. I performed these actions and there was nothing wrong in this. But the result of some past action, the result of some past action, and past means what? Not only of this life. Not only of this life. And how many lives have we gone through? Tell me. How many lives? Countless. Countless. And the, in the account, so many actions and results are lying there. Actions are lying there. The result of this particular action may be infringed by the result of some past action. I have performed a wrong action in the past, say. Unbecoming action in the past. The result is waiting. And now when I'm performing this action, the result of this, I estimated that it should be like this. But instead, what happens? Something else of the past comes in between, infringes that, and the result which I get is totally different. Not to my expectations. But who decided this? Ishwara. It is, this is his freedom, which to take, how to give, why? He knows the best. He knows the best. We can never escape our own doings, good or bad. You do it, that is why, with full freedom, full understanding. But once you do it, the result will be decided by Ishwara. And don't think that he is out to punish. Far from it. He is not out to punish. He is only out to teach. He is nothing but compassion. This we may not understand when we are facing an unbecoming result. When we are facing an undesirable result, it will be hard to accept that he is compassionate and kind. But when we look back, it is always for the better. Or whether we understand this or not, but this we have to understand, that he has no bias for you. He is merely dispensing and he is like a mother, like a father. Sometimes, we know this, we have gone through this. Doesn't mother give us a bitter pill? And a good mother will give that, whether the child likes it or not. When you are giving the bitter pill, Ayurvedic medicine, to the child, which is necessary for him, the child will react Child will resist, or what will mother do? Press him, pull him, open his mouth and push it. That time the mother may appear very cruel, but it was for his health. It was needed. Exactly. In the same manner, Ishwara is kind and compassionate always, always. His only purpose is to see that the child, the jiva, moves ahead in the ladder of evolution. So what I'm trying to say is that the, the one who decides the result is Ishwara. And so when the result comes, whether I like it or not, whether it is desirable or undesirable, what, will, what would be the wisdom? I accept it. Whether I like it or not, it is there for me. But now, the wisdom, buddho sharanam and vichya, what should I think? Where should I take shelter? 
that it is prasada. Prasada buddhi means what? Graceful acceptance. Gracefully I accept the result. And when the prasada comes, when I call it prasada, then what is prasada? I don't look at the name and form and what the prasada is. Whether it is laddu, or it is whipped rice, or it is some raw dal, or bhasma. In India, during the Chaitra month, you know, they give neem juice also. Neem juice. Offer it to Bhagavan as if he is not healthy. <laughs> they offer neem juice to him and then give it to us. But once the name is Prasad, then what? How do we? Our perception of looking at the prasada is changed. We look at it and feel blessed in having it. No matter whether it is ash or laddu. From Tirupati you may get laddus. Badrinath, you get those uh, mumaras. <laughs> Things like that. But that is not important. Important is that it has touched the feet of Ishwara and has come to me. I am blessed. It is for my well-being. When this is the uh, when this is the bent of mind, when this is the attitude towards result, then what? I move on. I don't get stuck. Otherwise, I get stuck there. Why did it happen to me? Why? Tell me why. And there is no answer to this why. Uh, there is absolutely no answer to this. Why? Nobody can say that you did this, this in the past. Bhagavan is the Supreme Court. The local, the, the local Supreme Court also decides the verdict influenced by this one influenced by this. So, towards the result, what should be my attitude? Prasada. Gracefully I accept it. And when I gracefully accept it, I learn from it. Otherwise I react. If I react, resist, throw tantrums, and cannot get out of it, I don't learn anything. I don't learn anything from what has happened. Whereas, when I accept it, then my mind is equipoised, composed and calm. Otherwise, the pendulum will either be elation or depression. Depression. That is why we have to teach our children, our people, people whom with we are associated, we should teach them this. This is the duty of all the elders. Teach, make children ready. We don't wish that anything should happen in their lives. We bless them, but life is life. We never know. So teach them, make them ready. This is our duty. And otherwise, you know, children are also in depression. Youngsters in depression can't handle their life, can't handle what happens with them. So many suicides, why? Why? They just don't think and give away their lives. Is it that easy? Your pay, life is so important. But children, youngsters, teenagers, adolescents, they can't handle themselves. Very weak, everybody has become so weak. With all the money, you can't handle your life. I'm not ready to accept. And I hang myself. Take drugs, take do this, do that. I cannot handle. We are lacking all this. We don't have this wisdom. It is right here. But we have to bring it in our lives. Teach your children. This is by the way I'm telling you. This is our duty. Result is not in my hand. Better be ready. 
and you accept it and move ahead then you will learn something from it otherwise get stuck you know the story of that stoic philosopher you must be knowing i'm sure that there was one philosopher not sto stoic we will come later but he was he is a philosopher and he's waiting for the safe arrival of his family and uh, is all his wealth he's migrating so everything has to come in a ship his family and uh, wealth and every all assets hard at everything is coming in a ship and he's waiting and suddenly somebody knocks the door the messenger comes and he says who is it he says sir he opened the door and he said sir the ship which was bringing your children and family i mean family and wealth and everything has sunk has sunk in the ocean now this fellow replies what and then his next response was so what his next response was so what then the messenger says sir your wife has gone your only son has gone this fellow says what then sir they have gone next response was so what so what understand when he says what doesn't mean he is deaf he is not deaf but for a second he can't accept then the messenger says sir your wealth is gone you are a pauper now you are on the streets what next second he said so what so what you will have to start afresh what next respond so what see as for a second he could not accept everything is gone he could not accept but it took him only another second to recover from that and accept and he said what so what even this can happen we do not know what is up in the sleeves of future we do not know what is up in the sleeves of future bhagwan has not given us the eyes to see that he has kept that with him what will be the next moment we do not know but be ready be ready it can be anything it can be anything you must have heard you know that abdul kalam the president of india he died while speaking he was speaking he tried to utter the words and the words did not come out and fell there what i am trying to say is you don't know what will happen next moment that is decided by him the results are decided by him he is the author of the results i am the author of action the author of result is he accept that and have faith and trust in his blessings in his jurisdiction looking in the hindsight we will find good i didn't i didn't get that job good i didn't get it good i didn't get the visa <laughs> sometimes people cannot accept that i i didn't get this job the visa this partner i didn't get this partner he he selected someone else good later on you realize what i'm trying to say is that it takes some time for us to see that it was okay it taught me something so otherwise otherwise what will happen all the time i will be either happy next moment unhappy dancing to the tunes of the results seesaw sometimes elated sometimes depressed what am i going to learn in that 
with that bent of mind what am i going to learn how am i going to understand life and my relations and my children what am i going to give them when i am not in mood all the time not in mood all the time angry what what is happening why it happened when i am not in control of myself when i cannot handle myself how do i expect to handle them and teach them so we must know all this ma siddhyas another definition of karma yoga is samatvam yoga uchyate samatvam composure of mind sameness of mind sameness sameness of mind towards the results which are not same sameness of mind i command the sameness of mind in the face of the results which are not the same results are not same but the my my attitude of my mind the composure of the my mind is same whether it is favorable or unfavorable this is a big achievement this is a big achievement this is the siddhi siddhi is not that i have millions siddhi is not that i have two two big big mansions and this and that and my one child is in europe and other one in uk and another no what is the siddhi siddhi is i can handle my life i can handle my likes and dislikes i can handle the situations this is the real strength everybody doesn't have this strength and those who do not have this strength suffer in life very very difficult to come out from the situations and what life offers before you this is the strength which that i can handle whatever is fine it took only 2 minutes for him to come out for us it may take what years and years <laughs> years and years we can't come out not that you don't like your people sometimes our near and dear one goes away it can happen we have all come together because of prarabdha because of some certain karmas and again because of the certain karmas we will depart we will, our path will be separated again this we don't decide bhagwan decides the force of karmas brought us together again when that is over don't hang on don't hang on if you hang on you lose that time you lose the opportunity we have to understand all this otherwise the result the result will shake me off will topple me down when the result comes and if i am not ready with this wisdom this education then gone then gone and i don't learn anything to the extent i accept it gracefully i learn and by my presence others will also learn by my presence and by my this attitude others will also learn so we have to be role models parents have to be role models elders have to be role models it is not that children will learn only in school we have to constantly teach them so what is what buddho sharanam an which i take shelter in which understanding it can happen let him decide he knows better i don't want to interfere not that we are allowed to interfere but we still interfere why you did like this why every day some people say you know, every day i fight with ishwara every day i fight okay you fight he doesn't mind you can bring out your outburst before him okay but understand that he is your well wisher some day you will understand this 
And when that, when I understand this, understand my mind is at rest, free from reaction, free from any complaints, and I am in the present. I am in the present. Otherwise, where am I? In the past. In the past, complaining about it. Imagining what will be the future now with this kind of present. So I cannot utilize the present. The wealth that the present is, is gone. The wealth that the present is, every moment is wealth before me, is gone. Because of my lack of understanding. See, these are all simple things. But when we don't know them, when these things are not at hand, our life is wasted. Prime time of our life is gone. So, Sitya Sityo Samo Bhutva. Siddhi Asiddhi Samaha Bhutva. Lord Krishna says right in the 13th chapter, uh, Ishta Nishtopa Patishu Samatvam. Whether it is Ishta Nityam Cha Samachit Tattvam. He says nit, one of the values he gives, Nityam Cha Samachit Tattvam. Ishta nishtopa patishu. May you have samatvam, nityam, always. Towards what? Ishta, anishta. Favorable, unfavorable. Desirable, undesirable. Samatha. Samatvam. This will help me. This is prasada buddhi. When you have prasada buddhi, finished. You move ahead. Accept it gracefully. There is one poet, there was one poet in Gujarati literature, very famous one, you must have heard about him, in case you have not, Narsi Mehta. The famous bhajan, Vaishnava Janato Tene Kahiye, is written by him. When he, uh, he was all the time, you know, in, lost in the devotion of Lord Krishna. And then he got the news that his wife has passed away. Suddenly he got the news that his wife has passed away. What was his expression? Immediate expression, you know. Balu thayu bhangi janjar. Which means, okay, fine. Now I am free to take Ishwara's name. Not, <laughs> not that he didn't love his wife. Not that he had no feelings. But for such people, you know, they are so evolved. It doesn't take time to accept the situations. Nothing can disturb them. When nothing can disturb you, you have won it. You have made your life right understanding. So, we have these two facets in a karma. One is while performing and the other, other one is while receiving the result. What is the definition of karma yoga while performing action? Yoga karmasu kaushalam. Bhagavan gives beautiful definitions in the second chapter itself. While performing karma, what is yoga? Yoga ha karma su kaushalam. In karma, what is expertise? Not how well you do it, how fast you do it, but with what attitude you do it. That is kushalata. Yoga bhavana, yagna bhavana, the spirit of offering, giving, sharing, even if I don't get it, but I give. This bhavana is kushalata, expertise, skill while performing action. Understood? Yoga ha karmasu kaushalam. And while receiving the result, what is yoga bhavana? Samatvam yoga uchyade. Samatvam. Everything is fine. My mind remains composed with understanding. This is not, this is not tamas, not laziness, but this is understanding. Then we are, we have the right attitude. And constantly we are doing and finding the result, doing and facing the result. If at all these times, while doing, while receiving, while doing, while receiving, when we have this buddhi, then 
we are in the right we are in the right direction then we will enjoy a mind which is always cool and calm not complaining and such a mind is the best instrument for learning so when we are doing we keep this in mind that i have to give let me let me take all the opportunities to share what i have and we do it in a proactive manner we do it we give giving doesn't mean only wealth that is one of the things giving means caring for a person helping them saying them few good words paying attention to them people need all this just sitting with them just listening to them this is also big seva this is also very big seva people need our attention you know we are all the time busy all the time busy and my father is all alone mother is all alone waiting for me to talk to them these days these are the problems they are lonely i may give it give them a separate room all the facilities everything what do you lack when they complain we say what do you not have such a big house all the facilities everything you have and what is your problem yes what is their problem we know their problem is i go and sit with them just give them some time this is karma yoga understand we need not go out and do have ngos and <laughs> we may not do all that kind of seva it's okay but do this what i'm trying to say is we have the opportunity every moment to do some seva every moment just look at look around just look around and take up the opportunity so this will be a blessing to yourself there is nothing like this as i said you can't imagine where it will take you it will just be a headway for you once you do it just experience it discover after doing it moment you do it you feel happy you feel good about yourself we feel good about ourselves when we do this then i don't need big big things for happiness tea and coffee and alcohol and addiction i don't need so those sensations it comes from within so deliberately i have this attitude while performing karma swakarmana tam abhyarche i worship him every every action is like a flower which i offer to ishvara when we do archana before our bhagwan ishta devata achyutaya namaha anantaya namaha vishnave namaha this is what we do similarly each and every action may it go to ishvara may it please them it becomes aradhana work becomes my action becomes worship provided we know provided we know you may not go to temple if you don't want but this itself becomes worship aradhana why miss it and it will bless me each and every action offered to ishvara before me may it be my mother father employer employee whoever whoever my enemy also after doing this there won't be enemy <laughs> there won't be enemy enemy will be replaced by this may sound impractical it may sound impractical but this is what it is either we do it or we be remain what where we are 
and suffer and suffer. So this is what we wanted to, I wanted to discuss, to share with you with reference to buddho sharanam anvichya. Why? Because Lord Krishna said in the second line, durena hi avaram karma buddhi yoga dhananje buddho sharanam anvichya krupanaha phalahetavaha. If we don't do this, and if our life centers around the individual, the selfishness is there, then I'm krupanaha, miser. Why? Why miser? Because I forget what I am. I forget what I am and keep on asking, keep on demanding. At that time, I'm forgetting who I am. So Yagnya Valkyaji says, Pashikara has written here in, uh, in the commentary of Krupanaha Phalahetava. He has written, why? Because this Krupana word is used by sage Yagnya Valkya in Brihadaranyaka Upanishad. In Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, Sage Yagnya Valkya uses this word. Krupanaha, Krupan, there he says, talks to Gargi. Gargi is a ma uh, woman of wisdom. In those times, there were women who were knowing everything. One of them is Gargi. Another famous woman is Yagnya Valkya's wife only, Maitrey. And this is Gargi. Gargi was very, she was wise. And they both have dialogue. At that time, Yagnya Valkya tells him, uh, Yova etat gargi aviditva asmat lokat praiti sa krupanaha. He says this to her. I'll, I'll read it out for you. Hmm. Yova etat aksharam gargi aviditva asmat lokat praiti sa krupanaha. He says, what does it mean? O gargi. One who departs from this world, not knowing, aksharam aviditva, not knowing what aksharam, aksharam means immutable self. Immutable self, one who goes away without knowing the self. Such beautiful atma, the truth, the absolute reality, my core being, one who goes away and the only reality. One who goes away without knowing this, they are what? Sa Krupanaha. They are misers. Why? They didn't utilize the intellect. They didn't utilize the opportunity which is given to them. Bhagwan has given us birth, the kind of intellect human beings have that nobody else have. No other species. Because they can't do this atma, anatma, viveka, they may be otherwise dolphins and they are supposed to be very, very intelligent. But this kind of intellect, separating atma, anatma, knowing what is atma, getting rid of anatma, all this they cannot do. This we are given, very big gift. And if we don't use it, misers are born. Who are the misers? Who have but cannot use it. Yagnya Valkyaji says, if we have, we are given, and when we don't use it, then it is, we are misers. Like the touchstone, you know, once a, once a uh, one very poor man, he went to a uh, Mahatma, who had all kinds of Siddhis, and said, give me something, I, I am very poor. So the Mahatma gave him a touchstone, Parasmani, touchstone. The uh, uniqueness of the touchstone is, you know, that whenever it, it, it turns the metal into gold, that is the uniqueness of the touchstone, that was given to him. And then this fellow took it and did not know how to use it. So he gave it to his wife. And wife is saying, what have you brought? What have you brought? But since it was lying in the kitchen, she used it for making chutney. <laughs> she is making chutney from that. Then again, after some time, uh, the Mahatma came and this fellow again went, you did not give me anything. He said, I gave you that stone? He said, yes, but I have, of what use is that? He said, you don't use it? He said, yes, I, my wife is using it for making chutney. 
the thing which can give you gold, you have used it for what? For a, for make, for this kind of thing. Similarly, you know what I'm trying to say. The thing which is given, this body, this mind and intellect, is not for bhoga. This sophisticated upadi is for what? Is for helping, sharing, giving, and then knowing the self. It is meant for that purpose. When, when, when we don't use it for that, what is it? We are misers. We are, we, we wasted it. Opportunity doesn't come that soon. Opportunity doesn't come every so often. So when it comes, grab it. When it comes, grab it. Understand, life is in making right decisions every moment. When you make the right choice every moment, you make your life. So be alert. Buddho sharanam anvich. Every time decide what is right, what is wrong. What is atma, what is anatma. What is giving, what is grabbing. What is consuming, what is contributing. What is sharing, what is grabbing. What is competing, what is cooperating. What is prasada, what is getting depressed. All this keep on thinking and accordingly make your decisions. In making the right decisions, you make your life. So always take refuge in the right understanding here. Okay? So this is, with this we conclude. Thank you. Om Purnamatav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamutachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Shankaram Shankaracharyam Keshavam Badarayanam Sutra Bhashya Krutavande Bhagavanta Punaf Punaha Ishvaro Gururat Meti Murti Peda Vibhagine Bioma Vadvyakta Tehaya Dakshina Murta Ye Namaha Om Shanta Shanta Shanti Harihi Om Shri Guru Bio Namaha Harihi Om I thank everyone for listening patiently and giving me a chance to talk to you. Thank you. I enjoyed talking to you. <laughs>